What is happening everybody? Welcome back to Football Therapy with me, your host Jan. I do hope everyone is doing well. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome to today's video, which is of course a Chelsea news video where I'll be talking about three things. Well, actually, today's video is very much a striker orientated video where I'll be talking about three strikers in this video. Three Chelsea strikers, actually. Michi Batshuayi, Olivier Giroud, and of course, the new boys just signed a professional contract. There's some interesting stuff to discuss between Batch Fry and Giroud that's actually quite depressing. <laughs> and also, I want to talk about Tino Andrin, the young number 10 attacking midfielder boost who is looking to sign a new contract with Chelsea and why I think that's really important. That's what I'm going to talk to you about. But before we do get into the numbers, the stories, and my opinions, a quick reminder to you guys to subscribe to Football Therapy if you've not yet done so. Please do sub, hit the bell notifications icon because that is important. Why not like the video to help me out and follow me on Instagram. Come hang out on the lives. All right, let's get into it. Let's start with young Tino Andrin. This dude is a boost. He's got the physicality slash physique of Ruben Loftus-Cheek. If you could have more than Ruben Loftus, more than one Ruben Loftus cheek on the pitch, why is that so hard to say? Then you should do it, man. He came, he obviously came on against Grimsby Town in the cup earlier on the season. Uh, I was at the game. I got to have a good look at him. Very, very, very impressive. Um, such a specimen for such a young lad, but very technical. And it looks like he operates closer to goal than Ruben Loftus-Cheek. Ruben Loftus-Cheek likes to drive from deep from a sort of number eight, six position, left centre, mid, and just, you know, bulldoze forwards. I'm not being unfair when I say bulldoze forward here when I talk about Ruben Loftus-Cheek because he's got the technicality of a ballet dancer, but he can absolutely bulldoze forward. So he's good driving from deep, operating on that left-hand side. It does look like Tino Andrin can play in the hole behind the striker, uses physicality, very technically good as well, good at releasing the ball quickly. Um, he won't be able to press like Mason Mount when Mason Mount plays in that same area, but in terms of physicality and bullying off opposition, my oh my, that's a tasty proposition. Now apparently he's stalling to sign a new contract, but I think he probably will because he wants sort of, um, I guess he, he wants to basically jump on the boat of youth team players playing in the first team. He wants sort of, not promises, but a kind of assurances from the club that he will play some first team football. And to be honest, man, I'm all for it. If Chelsea want another backup in that attacking mid sort of area, to be honest, I'd probably rather Tino Andrin than I would Conor Gallagher, personally. I'd like to send Gallagher on a Premier League loan, keep Andrew in around the first team, play him in some cups, who knows, stick him on the bench in the Premier League. I really do rate him highly. I think he looks like an absolute specimen built for English football at the highest level. And I do hope he signs that new contract and we see him on the pitch playing under Super Frankie Lampard. Right, next up, let's start the striker chat. Now, I'm not going to talk about the new boy just yet or the new contract boy. <laughs> let's talk about Chelsea's current two other strikers than Tammy Abraham. Olivier Giroud, Michy Batshuayi. Obviously, the last time out that Michy played, started against Man United, he was dismal, man. He was very, very frustrating indeed. Throughout that game, I think he did one good thing towards the latter stages of the game, where he carried the ball forward by himself on the break. It was actually a really good piece of work. But of course, in front of goal, at the final move, he, was, he just snapped at it. His confidence is really poor. His shooting is really, really poor. Olivier Giroud came on, looked very, very good, scored an offside header, but it was a very good header. And everyone's like, oh my God, why aren't we playing Giroud, the World Cup winner, this whole thing with Michy Batshuayi, like, Ugh, look at Giroud, we should have been playing him all along. I'm one of these people, right? And, but I do remember, and I do maintain, and I've said it on this channel many times before, that Giroud, when he did start that last game, I can't remember the opposition, but he was a passenger. When Michy's playing, you're like, oh, he's missing all these chances, but he's involved in these chances. There was this game that Giroud started, you have to forgive me for getting which fixture it was, and he just wasn't involved. He was like 10 players. So I've looked at the comparisons of their EPL stats uh, this season. I have tweeted it out, but I'm just going to quickly read through the numbers for you just quickly. Right, so this might come to a shock of some people. Minutes played in the Premier League. Batshuayi, 208, Giroud, 214. So I was like, damn, Giroud's played more minutes in the Premier League than Batshuayi. And I thought, yeah, he has. He'd probably been given more starts, maybe. Um, and yeah, he's just played more minutes, which blew my mind. 
Michy has a goal and an assist in the Premier League. Giroud has no goals and no assists in the Premier League. So Batshuayi has two goal involvements in 208 minutes. That's a goal involvement in every 104 minutes. That's like a good striker return. And obviously in more minutes, Giroud has nothing. But wait, there's more. Batshuayi constantly running offside really did my head in. Um, offside per 90, I was sure that Batshuayi would be more. Michy's only 0.4 times per 90 he's offside, while Giroud's 0.7. So nearly double than Batshuayi uh, offsides per 90. <laughs> and Batshuayi is a better passing accuracy at 82.5%. Giroud's just 80%, which is marginal, but 2.5% makes a difference. Has Giroud's, or has Giroud grown better in his absence? Like maybe. Now, I know context is everything, but I was really, really, Shocked to see Batshuayi was beating Giroud in all these metrics and then made me think god do I have to re-evaluate How I feel about these strikers, but then I've been no because it's this I'm a stats man You guys know it, but this comes down to the eye test for me Giroud looks more confident on the pitch than Batshuayi at the moment Even if he's like a bystander and the game passes him by if the ball comes to him in big moments I think he's gonna score like that offside header and not only that his link-up play. Now his link-up play for me is what clinches it. He does do those one little touches. Remember he used to do it with Hazard beautifully. In that small cameo against Manchester United, he had a couple of good moments with link-up play where he laid off the ball really, really well. Batshuayi simply doesn't do that. Um, Giroud does have a better key pass per 90 than Batshuayi. It's marginal, but he does it's better. So that's really, really important. If we're gonna need these players to play between the lines, run into the spaces, you need someone to do that link-up play. Batshuayi can't do that. Even though he's beating Giroud and everything else, that's enough for me to give Giroud a chance at the moment. So yeah, there's that. I'm really interested in getting your thoughts on the two backup strikers. What do you think? Are you surprised to hear those numbers like I was to read them? Let me know about that. Who do you prefer, Batshuayi or Giroud? I mean, everyone's going to say Giroud because of the recent outing, but you know what I mean. Right, so let's move on to the final story of today's video, and that's Chelsea giving a professional contract to a new young 18-year-old Albanian striker. <clears throat> Armado Broja. Armado Broja. 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 Obviously Chelsea signed that 16 year old Norwegian kid recently, but Broja is uh, older. He's 18, he's a lot more developed, he's physical. He's doing really, really well in the youth leagues for Chelsea. In just nine games in the league this season, he scored nine goals and bagged himself an assist. So it's over a goal contribution per game with an assist. Basically, he's uh, an elite marksman in terms of converting chances. Chelsea have looked at him and they've obviously gone, right, this striker, he's putting the ball in the back of the net. That's lovely. We haven't seen that in a while. He's built well enough. We think he could do something in the future for Chelsea. Now, Chelsea have given him a professional contract, no longer a youth team player. They've looked at him and gone, bang, bang, we'll have a bit of that. And that's significant, not just because they've given him a professional contract, but also because of the regime at Chelsea at the moment, what that means, what that reflects. With Frank Lampard at the helm and Jody Morris, etc., this could be big, even if Chelsea sign a new centre forward in the summer, which I actually fully expect them to do. We could see where Giroud's going, and I also think we could probably see the back of Michy Batshuayi come this summer. I genuinely do feel that he's had so much chances as well. <laughs> That's a bit of a weird one. People say he hasn't had enough chances at Chelsea. But so many managers haven't fancied Batshuayi at Chelsea. So if Giroud goes, Batshuayi goes in the summer, which is highly likely in my opinion, Chelsea have Tammy Abraham, another really good striker that they buy in the summer, both competing for that first team spot, for the starting spot. Hopefully like, you know, egging each other on to get better. And who knows, Broger might be that rotational striker in the first team that goes down into the under 23s, comes back into the first team, scores goals in other competitions. And you know, it'll be like 19 by then. Who knows, he might be undroppable and Chelsea could have another like teenage superstar starting in the Premier League. It's possible, man. If this dude's converting chances more and more, if he does it when given the opportunity next season, they obviously like the look at him, they've given him the contract. I think this could be a really positive move and Chelsea obviously can put all their finances into one other striker, another defender, you know, these big problem positions for Chelsea. And then they've got this like mercurial talents in between from the youth academy that can come in into a more stable, good side 
do what they do best, score goals and create. You know, you could have Tino Andrew and behind Broder doing bits in certain games. It's all lovely, really. There's a reason why these kids are the best academy players in the world. And there's a reason why a lot of people want to see them in the first team, provided the first team is settled and structured, which Chelsea aren't really there yet. Anyway, what do you guys think? Get down in the comment section below. Have you looked at this striker? What do you think? Do you like the idea of him coming in to play third striker next season? What do you think? Is it time for Batshuayi to leave with Olivier Giroud in the summer? Get down in the comment section, express your thoughts and opinions on this, please. If you enjoyed the content today, please do like the video, that helps me out a lot. Remember to subscribe if you're new to the channel. Follow me on social media at Football Yannick on both Instagram and Twitter. That's it from me, guys. You not enjoy the football, and I will see you later. You ain't so tough with that bad boy tuck. I'ma get it how I'm living, I'ma walk the walk. Outline my lines, I rap through thought. Body bag the verse, outline the chalk. In my life, seen trouble, hustle on the double. Silence on the trigger, like my pick got a muzzle. Yo, chick like to guzzle, bad boy stay in trouble. I only love this paper, sorry, I don't. I love me, baby.